So the other day I saw this video by Polymars where he made a game in Discord utilizing a bot that you interacted with. Overall I thought it was a really cool video and you should definitely go check it out. But there are some things that I thought that could have been done differently or improved upon. Now I'm no stranger to remaking games in weirder, unfamiliar environments. I remade both Tic-Tac-Toe and Call of Duty Zombies in Minecraft, and also recently I've been remaking Hangman that my chat can play while I stream. So at least to say, I was very intrigued by this video and I decided to give it my own shot and my own kind of personal touch on how to do this sort of project. So I ended up choosing Snake as the game to remake, simply because it's actually a pretty decently easy game to remake, and because it's... That, that's really actually the only reason. This is actually the game you can play if you go to Google and literally just Google Snake, you can play this. So let's get to it. I also chose to make this game using JavaScript just because I have previous experience making a bot in JavaScript, so there was a why not for me. And so to start this, I did what every good programmer does and I copied and pasted the code from discord.js, which is the library I'm using to make this bot, and ran the bot to verify it worked. After getting a satisfactory Pong back from my ping, I decided to reuse Polymars' idea of using a embed as the kind of canvas for the game, and I set about to make the bot output a canvas to my Discord channel. I also set out to find out how big of a canvas I could get for my Snake game in the Discord embed. Discord limits how big or how many characters you can put in the embed, so figuring out what width and height I could get away with and still have a usable game was one of the first things I tried to figure out. I started off with a measly 7x7 grid, plus walls all around it. I soon ditched the walls just because it felt weird to have them there and they didn't really seem to help me, especially with limiting how big of a grid I could make for the playable space. Removing the walls showed me that I still have a lot of room for improvement on my JavaScript skills, but in the end I was able to get a 10x10 grid of these blue square emojis onto the canvas for our playable area. From there, I added the snake and the apple emoji to represent the snake and the apple onto our game screen, and after fixing a nice typo in my code, I had a playable area for a snake game with a snake and an apple already set up. So currently to get the emojis on the screen in the canvas as it is, I'm sending Discord just the stringified version of the, of the character, basically how you would if you were to type it in and send it in Discord yourself. However, I had the great idea of well, that's a lot of characters, and I'm limited by my character count, so what if I just sent the em emoji as a Unicode character itself? Would that allow me to have more characters to then use to make the canvas bigger? The answer to that is yes, yes I can. And that will bring me to my final grid size of a 15 by 10 grid for my snake game as the canvas for our playable area. So now that we have the game board, the snake, and the apple all on the screen, all we need to do now is add input to make the snake move about the screen. For this, I again decided to use Polymar's idea of using the reactions that you can put onto the messages as the input for the screen, as opposed to simply typing these into chat. So after copying more code over from the Discord.js examples and documentation, I now have my bot reacting, or at least being notified when someone reacts to one of the reactions on the game. While I was doing this, I was also implementing the logic for the snake to move about the screen. The way I actually went about doing this was to actually store the snake as parts in an array, with each array element having a location on the grid of where that snake was. Every movement update would cause the new location of where the snake would go to be pushed to the front of the array, while removing the last element of the array to simulate the snake moving forward. Now the next like half hour was all spent with me just trying to figure out why the game wouldn't actually move the snake on the screen when you click one of these reactions. I just sort of kind of gave up after a while, I didn't quite know what the issue was, but I ended up just stopping on that for the second and moving on to adding in a sort of game loop to where when you hit a reaction it would clear those reactions out, add new ones on there so that way you could select the next reaction to then have them get cleared out, put them back up, cleared out, put them back up, that way once you input something the game would change, your reactions would show up, that way you could then do the next kind of iteration or update of the game. And after about an hour and a half of development that night, that's where I left off. You could now click on the buttons and they would clear them out and regenerate them. That way you could then select the next reaction you want to make the game progress. And actually looking back at the video now, I'm realizing that the snake was actually moving. I don't know where I fixed that. Uh, at the moment I didn't realize I had fixed that issue, but the snake on the screen is actually moving. It's a little hard to see because it's in a sea of blue, but it's there and that's where I sort of left off for the night. So the next day, I picked up from that point and quickly realized that the snake actually did in fact move with the controls and that the game was playable. 
I then spent some time playing the game only to realize that this was indeed very slow gameplay. I mean, just wow. That in incredible gameplay. So the next step was to actually add the logic to consume the apple and expand our snake in size. As you can see here, that does not currently happen. So after adding the code to relocate the apple once you eat it, and also to increase our snake's length by one when we eat an apple, after I slowly crawl to the apple, you will see that that doesn't happen. The apple moves to a new location on the screen, and after I put another input in, our snake is now a length of two. After playing a little longer, I kind of realized that this game was taking forever and then I wouldn't stop playing unless I kind of crashed the game on myself. So I attempted to go off the screen to crash the game, only to realize that going off the screen doesn't actually crash the game and that the snake just glitches off the game and kind of can come back in the end. It was... I wasn't really expecting that to be honest. So after adding the logic to make the snake wrap around the screen when you go off, so if you go off the bottom you come back on the top, I also add the logic into where if you kind of turn into yourself, you will lose the game. Basically, you eat yourself, you lose the game like as a normal snake. So I added it all in, and as you can see here, it now works. If you go off the screen here, I come back in the other end, and the game is basically snake. This is literally snake in a playable fashion on Discord, and yeah. So I actually wasn't done there because, let's be honest, this is painful. Like. This is literally painful not only to watch, but to play. It's so slow. It just, no one would play this. I mean, cool, it's a good concept, but just, just no one would play this. It's not realistic. So I decided to redo the reaction system. In Discord, when you react to a message, if you have the ability to, you can actually remove someone's reaction from that via this screen right here. I can actually remove my own reaction to that message to allow me to react to it again. So if we have the bot remove the person's reaction after they react, in theory, they should be able to keep playing the game and just never have to deal with the reactions getting removed entirely and re-added. So after lots of trial and error, we finally have it. We finally have the game playable to where when we react to a message, the game will update based upon that and then remove your reaction, allowing you to then re-react Play the next step of the game and keep playing that way. No more waiting for the reactions to get cleared out, re-added, cleared out, re-added. This is infinitely better to play. Now it's not a perfect system though. There are still some wonkiness with kind of double inputs and kind of doing two steps at once. It's not perfect. But in the end, we have Snake playable in Discord. I'm calling it there. This is this is good enough to me. We have a score, we have the snake, the snake grows when you eat the apple, you can keep going, you lose when you hit yourself. I, to me, that's good enough. You could just keep going forever, adding small details, adding kind of whatever you want, but for me, that's good enough. This is my proof of concept complete. Thank you to Polymars for doing his original video and giving me this idea. Hopefully you enjoyed my take on it and kind of the things I made to make the game kind of less spammy since it's all self-contained in an embed. It simply edits the embed. You use reactions to move, the reactions are edited. It feels pretty good to me. So I'm, again, overall pretty happy. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. All my code will be on GitHub, so feel free to fork it. Add with your touches you want. Just make sure to give me credit if you do anything like this, just like I am with Polymars, which again, if you haven't seen this video, go watch it, links down below. It's a great video. In the end, this is me, Snake, in Discord. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.